All right, welcome back to the deep dive. Today we're getting into some seriously cool stuff, like really mind-bending AI stuff, how machines can actually understand the 3D world, you know, like we do. Yeah, it's incredible how far this field has come on. Right. We're going to be looking at this new system called Spatial LM. Heard of it. Definitely, yeah. It's making waves, for sure, especially in the research community. I mean, think about it. Uh, this system can achieve, you know, that advanced 3D scene understanding, but just using, like, normal cameras. Yeah, just regular cameras, which is wild because, you know, traditionally you needed all this fancy, expensive equipment, so this is kind of a big deal. Huge, yeah. It's basically democratizing, you know, access to this really sophisticated spatial intelligence. I mean, think about it. Cameras are everywhere these days, right? Our phones, laptops, security systems, you name it. Exactly. So the spatial LM, what it does is it takes, you know, all this visual data, right? And it uses that to actually create a 3D point cloud. So basically it's like a super detailed digital model of like all the surfaces and objects, everything in that space. And then here's the kicker. It can actually understand the layout of the whole thing. Exactly. It's not just seeing like a jumble of points. It's actually identifying what's what. Like, okay, this is a well, that's a door, there's a sofa over there. It's like, it's thinking almost. Right. <laughs> so that's what we're going to be unpacking today. Like, how does it actually do that? What's the secret sauce behind Spatial LM? You know, how is it combining this language understanding with, with this whole visual processing thing to get this like really deep understanding of a 3D environment. Yeah, that's the ha moment, right? It's a fascinating fusion of different approaches. Totally. Okay, so let's rewind a bit. Getting a computer to really grasp a 3D scene, especially from just regular video like what we see every day, I mean, that's been a massive challenge in AI for ages, hasn't oh, it? Oh, absolutely, for years, yeah. So what were the, like, the main roadblocks with the older ways of doing this? So think about it. When you're looking at a video, right, it's just a sequence of 2D images, basically flat projections of a 3D world. Okay, yeah. So you're trying to, to accurately infer the depth, how far away things are, and the relationships between everything in space, and that's a huge problem. Traditional computer vision methods, uh, they really struggled with ambiguity, like figuring out, you know, what's in front of what, and they relied really heavily on just geometric cues, like the shapes and edges in the image. So, like, not really understanding the scene, just kind of guessing based on what they could see. Exactly. And especially with object detection, trying to find specific things in a 3D scene, but without having that direct depth information. It's tough, right? It was really, really challenging to get it right. So is this where Spatial LM comes in and just flips the script? You got it. It's a totally different approach. What makes it really stand out is the architecture itself. They've integrated a large language model, or LLM, into the system. Okay, so we've heard about LLMs before. They're like the brains behind things like ChatGPT. Right, exactly. But in Spatial LM, it's not just about processing words anymore. It's taking that LLM and using it to interpret 3D spatial data. Whoa, that's crazy. So it's like taking this model that's already learned so much about the world from language, from text. And applying that knowledge to understand a 3D space. So it's not just seeing shapes, it's going, oh, wait a minute, I know what that shape is, that's a chair. Yeah, it's about semantic reasoning. It's using that knowledge of the world encoded in language to figure out the relationships between things, to actually identify what objects are within that 3D scene. Okay, that's, that's wild. And what's really cool is that Spatial LM can handle different types of input, right? Like, it's not picky about where the data comes from. Absolutely. That's another key advantage. It can work with point clouds that are generated from, well, your standard video, just like what you'd shoot on your phone. Regular everyday video? Yeah, exactly. But it can also handle RGBD images. Those are special images that have depth information built in. Okay, so it's like already knowing how far away things are. Right, precisely. And even even high-precision LiDAR scans, those are super accurate 3D measurements used for things like self-driving cars. Wow, so this system is really versatile. It is, and that's a big step forward from earlier systems, which were usually designed to work with only one specific type of sensor. Makes sense. Okay, so we've got the visual data, we've got the point cloud. What happens next? How do we get from this raw spatial data to this like deep understanding that Spatial LM is known for? So let's break down the Spatial LM pipeline. The first step, like we said, is the input, whether it's images or an existing point cloud. Got it. Now, if the input is a video, there's a really important preliminary step that often happens first. It's called 3D reconstruction. 
And Spatial LN uses something called Master Slam for that. Master Slam. Okay, now that sounds complicated. Don't worry, it's not as scary as it sounds. Basically, Master Slam is what takes those flat 2D images from the video and builds the 3D point cloud. Ah, okay, so it's creating the foundation, the 3D model that the rest of the system can work with. Exactly, and it's actually pretty amazing. Master Slam stands for Monocular Algebraic Slam for Robotics. It's a technique that can simultaneously figure out the layout of the environment and track the camera's movement through that environment, all using just a single camera. That's impressive. So it's like building the 3D puzzle while figuring out where all the pieces go at the same time. Yeah, a great way to put it. And once that point cloud is built, then the core spatial LM processing can begin. Okay, so Master Slam has done its magic. We've got our 3D world ready to go. What happens next? So now we get to the heart of Spatial LM. There are several key modules that do the heavy lifting. First up, the point encoder. This is a neural network that analyzes the point cloud and picks out important geometric features. Okay, neural networks, they're like the building blocks of deep learning, right? So what kind of features is this point encoder looking for? Think of it like this. It's trying to identify the fundamental 3D shapes and structures within the point cloud. So like, is it flat? Is it curved? Is it an edge? That kind of thing. Exactly. It's learning to recognize those basic building blocks of 3D geometry from the raw point data. Cool. So it's not just seeing a bunch of random points anymore. It's starting to make sense of the shapes they form. Right. And these encoded geometric features, they then get passed to another module called the projector. Now, we don't have all the nitty gritty details about how the projector works, but what it does is crucial. It transforms these geometric features into something that the LLM can understand. Ah, uh, because remember the LLM, it's a language model. It deals with words and concepts, not raw geometric data. Right. So the projector acts as a translator, a bridge between the world of 3D geometry and the world of language. It's like taking the language of shapes and translating it into the language of meaning. Exactly. So now we've got this semantically rich representation of the 3D scene. This is where the LLM, the big brain of the operation, finally gets involved, right? This is where things get really interesting. The LLM isn't just processing spatial features. It's using its vast knowledge base to make sense of what it's seeing. Right, because remember, LLMs are trained on massive amounts of text and code. So they've already learned a ton about how the world works. And now they're applying that knowledge to a 3D environment. So what's its goal here? What's it trying to do? The objective is clearly stated to detect all walls, doors, windows, and objects. That's ambitious. It is, but that's where the power of the LLM comes in. It has this built-in understanding of what these entities are, their typical shapes, and how they relate to each other in space. Okay, so like it knows a wall is usually flat and vertical, a door is rectangular and swings open and so on. Exactly. It's using that knowledge along with the geometric cues from the point cloud to figure out what's what. So it's not just detecting shapes, it's understanding what those shapes represent in the context of a room or a building. Precisely. And the output of this LLM-driven analysis isn't just a list of identified objects. It's something much more powerful, structured data output. Okay, I've heard that term before, structured data. What's so special about it? It's basically information organized in a way that computers can easily understand and work with. It's like taking the LLM's understanding and translating it into a precise machine-readable format. So it's not just saying, hey, there's a wall over there. It's giving you all the details about that wall. Exactly. And the sources we look at mention that they use something called Python's at data class to define this structured data. Python, that's a programming language. So this is really geared towards practical applications. Absolutely. Okay, can you give me some concrete examples? Like, what would the structured data look like for a wall, a door, or, you know, just a random object? Sure. Let's say we have a wall. The structured data might include things like ax, a, as, bx, by, bz. Those sound like coordinates. <laughs> they are. They define the starting and ending points of the wall in 3D space. Okay, so we know exactly where the wall is located. Right, and then you'd also have things like height and thickness all represented as numbers. So a specific example might look like wall equals wall, 2.9.0, 2.3, niggas 4.9.0, 2.7.8. Wow, that's pretty detailed. It is, and it's all machine readable, so other programs can easily work with this information. Okay, what about a door? For a door, you'd have similar attributes, but you'd also have something called wallet. So it knows which wall the door is attached to. Exactly. Plus things like position X, position E, position is to specify where on that wall the door is located. And of course, it's width and height. Makes sense. So something like door wall 14, negative 1.9.3, 1 1.0.8, 1 2.1. Precisely. And for a general object, like a sofa or a chair. For those, they use something called a bang box or B box. It's basically a 3D box that encloses the object.
So it defines its size and orientation in space. Right. And the structured data would include the object's name, its position, its orientation, and its dimensions. For instance, B box 0 equals B box, sofa 2.9, negative 0.9, negative 1.6, 3.7, 1.7, and 8018. That tells us we have a sofa at a specific location, rotated at a certain angle, and with specific dimensions. So the LLM's understanding isn't just some vague idea. It's translated into really precise spatial data. That's the beauty of it. This is incredible. And to make it even better, Spatial M also allows for 3D visualization, right? Oh yeah, that's a big one. It's super helpful for researchers and anyone using the system. Basically, you can see the detected walls, doors, windows, all the bounding boxes overlaid right on top of the original 3D point cloud. So you can actually see what the system is seeing in 3D. Exactly. It's a great way to check if the system is working correctly and to get a better sense of the spatial layout. This whole LLM integration is such a game changer. It's like bringing this whole new level of understanding to 3D scenes. Couldn't agree, Mer. It's really the key to spatial LLM success. It's what allows it to go beyond simple geometric detection and achieve true scene understanding. All right, so spatial LLM sounds amazing in theory, but is there anything concrete that people can actually use? Like, are there any real-world implementations. Absolutely. Fortunately, the research team has been great about making their work accessible. There are specific Spatial LM models that are already trained and ready to go. You've got Spatial LM Llama 1B and Spatial LM Doge Q 0.5B. Okay, and those names, they kind of give away what's under the hood, right? You got it. Spatial LM Llama 1B is built on the Llama 3.2 architecture. That's a large language model with about 1 billion parameters. Parameters, those are like the, the knobs and dials that the, the model uses to make its predictions. Right, and Spatial LM Quin 0.5B uses the Quin 2.5 series, which has about half a billion parameters. So different options for different needs. And these models, are they publicly available? Yeah, you can find them on Hugging Face. Oh, that's awesome. Hugging Face is like the go-to hub for all things AI, so anyone can download these models and try them out. Exactly. They've got great documentation and instructions on how to use them. That's fantastic. So we've got the models. What about data sets? How do they test these models to see how well they perform? They've got that covered too. They created the Spatial LM test set, which is also available on Hugging Face. Okay. And what's special about this data set? Well, it consists of 107 pre-processed 3D point clouds, but these aren't just any point clouds. They were actually generated from real-world RGB videos using MMAS 3R SLAM. Oh, wow. So they took real videos, reconstructed the 3D scenes, and used those for testing. That's pretty realistic. Very realistic. And the creators actually point out that this data set is quite challenging because there's a lot of noise and occlusion. Occlusion, that's when objects are partially hidden behind other objects. Right. And in real-world scenarios, that happens all the time. So this data set is really designed to push these models to their limits. It's like the ultimate test of their spatial understanding skills. Exactly. Okay, so we've got the models, we've got the test set. How do they actually measure performance? Like, how do they know if a model is doing a good job? Well, for the structural elements, like walls, they use something called mean intersection over union, or IOU. Intersection over union, that sounds familiar from object detection in 2D images. Yeah, it's similar. It basically measures how well the predicted wall boundaries match up with the actual wall boundaries in the ground truth data. Okay, so the more overlap, the better the score. Exactly. And for objects, they use the F1 score at a 0.25 IOU. IOU threshold in 3D. So it's also based on how well the predicted bounding boxes align with the actual object locations. Right, and the F1 score takes into account both precision and recall, so it's a good overall measure of accuracy. And have they published any benchmark results for these spatial LM models? Like, how do they actually stack up? Yeah, they have. For example, on that spatial LM test it, spatial LM llama 1B achieves a wall mean IOU of 78.62%. Wow, that's pretty impressive, especially considering how tough that data set is. It is, and it shows that these models are capable of achieving pretty high levels of accuracy in real-world scenarios. Okay, so we've talked about how Spatial M works, we've seen the models, the data set, the metrics, but what about the bigger picture? What can we actually do with this technology? Well, that's the exciting part. Spatial LM is designed to be super flexible and practical. The structured data it generates can be used for all sorts of things. Like what? Examples. Well, it's great for indoor navigation and mapping. You could use it to create really detailed and accurate maps of buildings. Okay, so imagine walking into a shopping mall and your phone knows exactly where every store is, even if you've never been there before. Exactly. Or think about augmented reality applications. With spatial LMs, you could create AR experiences that are much more seamlessly integrated with the physical environment. 
So like placing virtual objects that actually interact realistically with the real world. Precisely. And then there's architectural planning. Spatial LM could be used to generate 3D models of buildings from blueprints or even from sketches. So architects could visualize their designs in a much more intuitive way. Exactly. And beyond those, there's also huge potential in robotics. Robots with spatial LM could navigate complex environments much more effectively. They could manipulate objects with greater precision. They can even collaborate with humans in shared spaces. So we could see robots that are much more aware of their surroundings and can interact with the world in a much more intelligent way. Exactly. The possibilities are really endless. And what's really cool is that spatial LM can output its data in different formats to suit different needs. Okay, like what? Well, we already talked about the 3D bounding boxes, but it can also generate 2D floor plans. Oh, that's super useful. Like, imagine having a floor plan of your entire house that's automatically generated. Exactly. And it can also output data in industry standard formats like IFC, which is used in architecture, engineering, and construction. So it can plug right into existing workflows in those industries. Precisely. It's all about making this technology as useful and accessible as possible. And what about the future? What are the researchers hoping to achieve next with Spatial M? Well, one really interesting direction is enabling more intuitive human-computer interaction in 3D environments. So like being able to talk to a computer and have it understand spatial commands. Exactly. Imagine being able to say, hey, computer, show me all the chairs in this room, and it would highlight them for you in real time. That would be amazing. It would. And another big area of focus is on embodied AI, which is all about giving robots and virtual agents the ability to perceive and act in the world. So those robots we were talking about earlier, the Spatial M, they can become even more sophisticated. Right. They can navigate complex environments, manipulate objects, interact with humans, all with a much deeper understanding of the space they're in. It's like giving robots the ability to truly understand the world the way we do. That's the ultimate goal. Well, this has been an incredible deep dive into Spatial LM's really groundbreaking stuff. So to recap, the key innovation here is the integration of large language models which allows for a level of semantic understanding that was previously impossible. And the best part is, it all works with readily available visual data, like videos from our phones. Yeah, and it's already leading to some really exciting applications in areas like indoor navigation, augmented reality, architectural planning, and robotics. And who knows what the future holds. Exactly. This technology has the potential to fundamentally change how we interact with computers and with the physical world around us. Absolutely. It's a really exciting time to be following this field. Well, that about wraps up our deep dive for today. Thanks for joining us. And as always, keep exploring, keep learning, and keep pushing the boundaries of what's possible. It's been a pleasure.